Thank you. Good morning. I uh, brought a little, little something uh, this morning to help with my uh, presentation. Gee, I'm nervous. Um, good morning, good morning, and thanks for uh, being with us uh, this morning. This is um, today the official birth of the latest member of the Macintosh family, uh, the Macintosh uh, Portable. And I can tell you... Uh, It's been quite an interesting uh, project uh, to, uh, to manage. Um, when we set out to design the Macintosh Portable, we had three sets of challenges in mind. Portability, consistency, and battery paranoia. <laughs> and we wanted absolutely no compromise in dealing with uh, these uh, challenges. Portability meant, for instance, uh, dealing with different materials, because this is a computer you have to carry and knock around. Uh, it meant a different treatment of uh, storage devices uh, for weight, uh, uh, size, uh, but also shock resistance. After all, they carry your data. Um, and last but not uh, least, uh, it meant uh, special treatment of uh, input devices. When you use a computer on your lap, the mouse doesn't roll very well on your thigh. Um, <laughs> a consistency, consistency, of course, uh, dealt with uh, software, system software, and application software compatibility. As our chairman uh, mentioned uh, this morning, we have the best game in this industry. We have one software architecture, so one diskette can run on all our machines without ifs and buts. Beyond the software compatibility, there is um, usage consistency. Everything you do on a desktop machine, we wanted you to be able to do on a portable Macintosh. Not just a little bit of note taking and, and spreadsheet work. Everything you do on a desktop. No subset of applications, no Mac Junior, no compromise. <laughs> Also, consistency means the look and feel. After all, we know it's an important issue to Apple in some, some ways. <laughs> After all, we, um, we have become known uh, for very crisp displays on all Macintosh uh, computers. And we wanted that tradition to be uh, uh, continued in, uh, in the portable, which was quite a, uh, an interesting uh, uh, piece of engineering work. Lastly, there is battery paranoia. Uh, if we use video aid cameras and portable CD players, we know how we feel about NACAD, the batteries. They quit on us without uh, warning. And because we are anxious about batteries, we tend to top them off, which is the wrong thing to do, because the, battery has, the batteries acquire memory and the, the capacity decreases over the number of cycles you recharge the battery. So what is annoying on a video aid uh, camera, for instance, becomes intolerable when your data, your work, is at stake. And we'll show you how uh, we dealt uh, uh, with uh, that as well. So in summary, what we set out to do was to have a true full function Macintosh without any compromise that you could use with great confidence and, of course, take anywhere.
So what we uh, have here is the... Uh, <laughs> this is the uh, carrying case extended edition. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I'd like to do this morning is uh, recreate for, for you uh, the impression I had when I took, for the first time, a prototype of the Macintosh portable home, set it down, opened it, pressed a key, and it woke up instantly, and all my work was there. So let's start with the logic board. So the logic board you have uh, at the heart of the computer, there is a CMOS, low power, version of the 68,000 microprocessor, 32-bit, working at uh, 16 uh, megahertz. You have static RAM, very low power RAM, one megabyte on the, log on the logic board, uh, extendable to another or more megabytes uh, on, on this connector. Uh, to, to give you an idea of, the, of what we mean by low power, one, on standby mode, one of these uh, chips consumes about one millionth the power of a standard 100 watt light bulb. You have um, the uh, power uh, manager IC, quite an interesting uh, component as it manages the flow of power, uh, wakes up or shuts the machine down on, uh, on you. And uh, three ASICs, one for video, and uh, two that do general logic, uh, logic work. You have on the back, you have connectors, uh, power, uh, when you recharge the battery, stereo Mac 2 uh, sound coming out here, two serial ports that you've come to know and love on the Macintosh, an ADB port for an external mouse, you can, you can, uh, you can use one as well, uh, SCSI connector for external hard drives, IWM actually SWIM for an external connector for a floppy, and a new connector which is a video connector which for, with an accessory allows you to drive projection systems, so like have portable, will travel and make presentations. <laughs> this is the polycarbonate uh, sub, uh, subframe where all the pieces of the computer uh, revolve around. Um, this, is the, uh, this is the kind of, uh, same kind of plastic uh, uh, used on motorcycle helmets. Um, and this is the most complex uh, piece of plastic we've ever designed uh, at, uh, at Apple. So I will attach the motherboard to the subframe. And everything goes in with a satisfying noise. <laughs> and I uh, plug the uh, power connector. Now I will put the, the uh, speaker there is one speaker, uh, and st stereo sound is available. We didn't put stereo speakers on the, uh, on the machine, sorry about that. <laughs> and I will connect the speaker to the uh, motherboard, uh, you know, as well. I'll uh, now take the uh, bottom uh, pan and put the subframe and logic board on it. And now we'll deal with uh, input devices. So what you have here is uh, an integrated pointing device and a, uh, and a keyboard. So on the keyboard, I like to say that we made no compromise. We took the same keys and mechanism that you have on the standard Apple uh, SE to, uh, uh, to a Mac 2 uh, keyboard uh, family. Um, we have here a trackball which replaces the mouse, and um, since uh, uh, we wanted to, uh, to take care of uh, all our customers, this pointing device can go on the left side as well as the right side. So if you're left-handed, <laughs> here's one for you. So I'll put uh, the, uh, the divider uh, first, the trackball, and its connector. Aha. Everything went well at the rehearsal, as they say. <laughs> uh, okay. Now the um, uh, 
the keyboard and its uh, connector as well. Okay, so we have the keyboard and, uh, and pointing device. Now let me deal with the storage devices. We have two on the machine uh, here. Uh, John talked about the super drive. This is the same super drive here, 1.4 megabyte, a ecumenical uh, floppy drive uh, that reads, of course, Macintosh uh, format, but also uh, MFM, MS-DOS, and OS2 format, as well as Apple II ProDOS uh, files. So the floppy goes here and connects Here. Okay. Now this is a uh, special three and a half low power, forty megabyte uh, drive, five, five about five watts uh, consumption here. And this is the internal SCSI cable. And, uh, and connector. And now we'll put uh, the, uh, the display. The display has been one of the uh, two most interesting challenges in, uh, this, uh, uh, in uh, this project. I'd like to say a few words about uh, the active matrix LCD uh, technology that we're using on, uh, the, uh, on the portable. All LCD uh, displays rely on uh, polarization. Um, what you want to do is flip the state of uh, a material called uh, liquid crystal. The pixels don't become black and white. Actually, they, they twist one way or another to change the, the, the polarity of, uh, of a light uh, coming through them. This is, this is like this. Now you, uh, now you see me, and uh, now you don't. So that's the kind of, um, of uh, rotation that... Uh, that you're using. And yet there is a difference. Other machines use passive metrics. Um, what, what we mean by that is to flip the display, the, the pixel, you need to apply uh, electric field. And uh, the passive LCDs are, are driven from the outside. You have electrodes, horizontal, vertical, and the pixel is sandwiched in between a vertical and a horizontal electrode. You want to have speed so that you can the display can respond. You want to have crisp uh, pixels and you want to have contrast. To, to have that, you need to apply a hard electric field to each pixel. The problem with the two electrodes, vertical and horizontal, is that the electric field spills over the surrounding pixel. You have a halo effect blurring the, uh, the pixel. Or if you, don't want to, if you don't want to have that kind of blurring effect, you need to lower the electric field, making the contrast and the speed lower. The way we deal with it is uh, active metrics. That is, we bring one transistor on the display per pixel. So this is, in effect, a, a, um, a very big integrated circuit. There are 256,000 transistors on uh, the display. And putting one transistor per pixel allows us to control very precisely the electric field and deal with the compromise that other technologies have uh, not successfully dealt with. That is, we have high contrast, high speed, and very crisp uh, pixels. So this is the hard part. This is the locking uh, pin here. Well, don't do this at home. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, the, uh, and the housing. Now I'll put the uh, keyboard cover. I need to connect the display. I forgot last night and was not pleasant. Um, <laughs> So this covers uh, the, uh, the keyboard, and we can uh, fold the cover and deal with the expansion cards. Here what you have is a one megabyte uh, static RAM, same, same kind of parts 
uh, expression card that goes into uh, this connector and brings the memory capacity, at least from, uh, from Apple, to up to two megabytes. Uh, uh, Third-party companies will, uh, uh, will do even more than uh, that. Okay. And this is the uh, new uh, low-power 2400 BPS uh, modem uh, that we also introduce uh, today. So you can truly take your, your Mac anywhere and, and still, get, if you're an electronic mail junkie, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is for you. And now we'll put the, uh, we'll put the battery. And I'd like to say a few words about uh, battery. We have a considerably heavier battery than a, a noble and worthy uh, competition. Because we, instead of NICADs, we chose uh, lead uh, acid sealed and gel type of uh, technology, so you don't have to put uh, water in, uh, in it. <laughs> why, why did we do that? Basically because NICADs have a very steep discharge curve. In other words, when they reach the end of the charge, they drop off without, uh, without warning, uh, which, is, which is not uh, very nice. In, uh, in contrast, uh, lead acid has a more graceful uh, voltage curve, so you get ample warning that you are reaching mid three quarters and then the end of the, of the battery charge. Actually, this, this is uh, mirrored with a uh, desk accessory uh, available on top of the Macintosh, so you can follow that. And, and there are four stages of warning. They, they get louder and louder as, uh, as you go down in, uh, in voltage uh, and capacity. <laughs> and at the fourth uh, stage, something happens, which is nice. The machine automatically goes to sleep while there is still a lot of uh, power left in the battery, thus preserving your work, your data. And I'll, I'll show uh, later how you can change the battery and still retain uh, uh, your work, even if you uh, were caught in the middle of some important uh, memo or, or presenta desktop presentation you were. Well, that's uh, almost the end of the assembly. This is the back cover here. This is the uh, power co cord. No, we don't need the, uh, the power cord. Um, <laughs> So now for the tense moment. If I press a key, I should hear a chime. Yes. So soon I will see the smiling uh, Mac face after the memory is, uh, uh, is uh, checked. Uh, and um, we will have liftoff. Well, here we have it. Thank you.